What's going on everybody? So uh, just I've been learning a little bit about graph algorithms and trying to get up to speed with, uh, with, with various popular algorithms, different types of graph traversals. And I don't know, I, I always think a lot of the material out there is a little bit confusing. And I just wanted to try and explain it to you in the event that you're having trouble trying to figure it out. You might be reading about breadth first search and depth first search and DJ Degas, whatever that guy, that genius from a long time ago who invented a way to traverse a graph with weights and find the cheapest path or something. Dejokstra? I don't know. You know what I mean. Maybe he was a lot smarter than me, but in any event, I'm just going to show you how to traverse a graph. Forget about the types of algorithms. Let's just think about it logically, right? Like, how would you, what, what the hell is a graph? How would you do it? So I'm going to set up something. So I found a package called Network X, which is a graphing package for Python. So at least we'll have a graph to look at. So here's our graph. I'm importing Network X as NX and matplotlib.pylab as PLT. You can find the link to the Jupyter Notebook in the video description. And I just found this on the internet. It's just an example of a graph. Now, one thing to at least understand about this is that this is a vertex, and these are other vertices which are connected to it via an edge. So if we look at C, it must have a lot of different vertexes connected to it via edges. And lo and behold, if you look at the graph, C to D, C to E, C to F, C to S, um, yeah, so four. And you know, in the case of S, Look at it, S to A, S to G, S to C. So that's a pretty popular one too. D to C, yeah, he's just kind of out there. B is just out there, a little bit lonely. But um, yeah, there you have it. If I was a caveman, I'd probably say that looks like the Big Dipper. Um, one thing to note about Network X is there are a lot of different ways you could draw that graph and it would still be the exact same thing. So if you're following along, you might yours might look a little bit different. So. Let's, let's try to traverse the Big Dipper here. Now, what do you mean traverse it? It just basically means that you could start, you want an algorithm so that you could start at any point, right? And you can find all other points. This is a, I don't know what you call it really, but fully connected graph. You, it's possible to access all the different vertexes or vertices within the graph. Just, you know, you can look at it, right? You can start anywhere, you can go anywhere. There are no like nodes that have no uh, edges which connect it to other parts of the graph. And it's not a particularly big graph. So how would we do that, right? When you really think about what we're trying to do here is, you know, how, how would we do this? So we need to write some kind of function, like so I'll just call it define traverse graph. And it's going to take some graph, obviously. Um, now, what else would it need, though? Like, if you just fed it this dictionary, this is a Python dictionary, what would it need? So it needs to know where to start, right? So it needs, like, a, a start node. And the node is just, like, A or B or C or D or whatever. The key's in the dictionary, right? So graph dict, graph dict keys. Those are the, uh, the different, you know, those are the values. So just, it's, it's a dictionary. We're calling it a graph, but it's a dictionary. So definitely the function is starting to take shape. We have a graph. We need to know where to start. So we need to keep track of things, right? So first we need to say, okay, so we need like a list or a plan of what we want to visit. So what's the plan? So let's keep track of it, right? So we're going to say we're going to have a list of, I'm sorry, a list of what we want to visit, and I'm going to initialize it with the start node. This is just a list with one item. That's it. It's simple. I could have created an empty list, and I could have appended the start node. Whatever. The other thing we want to do to avoid, um, this is important, I don't want to keep crawling the same node over and over and over. So you need to keep track of whether or not you've already seen the node. So I'm just going to make another list called visited. And it's empty right now because I haven't visited anything. In the function, when you call this function, it's not we're not doing this recursively, we're doing it iteratively. So when it starts out, it, it's an empty thing. 
So when you think about it now, you kind of want to say, while we have things to do, while we have nodes to visit, let's start working on that. So kind of like, think about it intuitively, you just say while to visit. Now, I just want to make this really clear. So while, while one, print true. Yeah, I know, I need to use that. Okay. Now, while one, two, whatever, print true. But watch this, if the list is empty, it never executes because this evaluates to uh, a false. So basically, to visit, while we have things to visit, we want to visit them. But at some point, the iteration of the while loop is going to have to terminate. And because oftentimes people approach this with a mindset of doing it recursively, uh, you have to explicitly manage uh, the stack when you do it iteratively. The recursive function strategy kind of implicitly manages the stack of work through the you know stack of, of the function calls that are executing within the system. But I think it's more comprehensible iteratively at first. So while you have things to visit, we got to get the node that we're going to visit. So I'm just going to call it like node to check out. And where are we going to get that? Well, the only thing so far we have is a list called to visit. And we can just pop something off of it. And this is... This kind of, in the next video, I think we're going to start, you know, like, forget about, like, are we taking it from the front of the list or the back of the list? That's really going to get into the essence of depth first search versus breadth first search. But let's just do that right now. So let's just look at a list, right? One, two, three. That's a list. Let's just pop something off of it, right? What if you pop the zero with element? One. So pop uh, the list method call pop. If you don't pass in any arguments, it's going to give you the last thing in the list. If you pass in zero, it's going to give you the first thing. So whatever, we're just going to keep popping zero, the zeroth element. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. So after we do that, we have a node. So now we need to go figure out what other nodes that node is connected to. For instance, if we start passing in, we start our whole iteration and we pass in A we need to somehow say, oh, I, I've got A, I checked it out, and I see that A is connected to S and B. Then I have to do something with that. So, you know, what do you gotta do for, you know, a dictionary? It's kind of like, what is the dictionary made of? It's a key and it's a list. So if I say for, like for X in graph A, print X, what did I call that? Oh, graph dict, sorry. So if I look at A, right, it's gonna have S and B are gonna come out of it. So that's like what we're about to do next here. So I'm just gonna call that for neighbor node in graph. And I'm just gonna copy node to check out. Whoops. And this is identical to you know this logic here. We're gonna wanna do something with these here. Now Let's put them in the to visit plan and we're going to insert them at the zeroth place. Put the neighbor node in there. And so just to be clear, right, it's kind of like we're starting at, say, A or wherever. We're checking out what other connections A has. We're putting them into the plan of who we're going to visit. Don't worry about where we're inserting them. Um, the key thing here is that we just want to make sure we're putting it into the plan. And we also want to note the fact that we did visit the, um, the node to, I'm sorry, the, uh, the neighbor node. So once we put it in the plan, we want to make sure we don't put it in the plan again, right? Put in, you know, route plan, note that we already added, right? We don't want to crawl it infinitely. Now, the thing we need to make sure here is we're keeping track of what we visited, 
but right here we want to make sure that we're not checking out a node that's already in visited so if neighbor node not in visited then we will plan on checking it out and we'll mark it off the list so that's kind of the crux of it and in the end here I think we just need to return yeah so when the while loop terminates uh, there'll be nothing more to visit and we'll hit the case where you know it's kind of like while empty this you know this will never uh, happen because this will evaluate to while false so in the end here uh, we just want to return I guess what we've seen we want to verify the whole goal was to traverse the graph right so we want to verify that everything and visited was actually everything in the keys of our graph dictionary so a good first step in that would be to return uh, visited so that compiled seemingly well and just kill all that white space um, I don't see any visual bugs but there could be some uh, so let's just say traverse graph some graph we're gonna give it graph dict and the start node you know let's give it B and this should return something graph is not defined right so just a mess here I'm referring to some graph as the uh, variable and I refer to it as something else in the function which is not going to work all right so traverse graph graph dict returns a uh, list of everything that was visited and uh, how can we check that this actually did traverse all the um, traverse everything so really let's look at graph dict keys we'll call a list on that all right we can you know let's just add a assert let's see if that works just to check there's an assertion error how can we say that two lists contain uh, the same elements well we could say uh, set Just take a look at this right so you, you can you can see there and if you called the assert on the set notation there you would see that it did it did traverse everything now really the, the, the big thing here you know what I'm gonna talk about in the next video because the whole difference between BFS and DFS is really in how you're taking elements from the to visit plan and how you're adding them to the to visit plan because imagine here you start at D the only thing you're gonna find is C but then once you get to C you're also gonna see E F and S so if you wanted to go broad you might visit E and then S and then F but if you were kinda of like just trying to trailblaze a really quick path you might go D to C to E to F and, and that's kind of the difference between uh, depth first search and breadth first search. Breadth first search focuses on every visiting everything that it finds in the order that it sort of finds them. And as it hits new nodes and it sees their neighbors, if it hasn't crawled another node yet, it'll put those neighbors kind of in the back of the queue. So they're really both very similar. It's just a matter of like how you want to order the operation of managing the to visit list or queue or whatever you want to use it and a lot of people are going to use some really abstract data structures from the collections module to manage this thing but you can just use a list it doesn't have to be that complicated so I'll formalize that in the next video but hopefully this was kind of like a good a good you know like no pressure walkthrough of how to actually uh, how to actually deal with this just a very simple algorithm that lets you look at all the nodes in a graph. All right, see you guys.